One of the first things you notice about the bike is the ergonomics of it. It's uh, extremely comfortable. It feels quite large. Um, it's like getting on a truck in some way. Um, compared, definitely compared to the KDM style adventure bike. But the handlebars are extremely wide, much wider than any bike that I've ridden before in this particular class. But uh, I kind of like it. It really has grown on me. Uh, on the left hand side we've got a whole bunch of uh, switching mechanisms here including cruise control, uh, the suspension adjustment and the GPS scroll wheel and on the right hand side we've only got a couple of simple ones around uh, mode setting and uh, heated grips. Now the bike itself as you ride it it's uh, you know for a 1200cc bike it's yeah, it's pretty good. It puts out 125 horsepower and uh, that's plenty for this you know style of bike. The um, I heard it described as a doughy type of motorbike, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree. I think it does everything it needs to do and it has the right type of power for that. Um, a few things about the bike. First of all, the cruise control works like a dream uh, on these particular bikes. All we simply do on the left hand side here is just flick the switch to the right, turn it on, and then once you set your speed with your throttle, you simply press the set button and you can take your hands off the handlebars. And then this releases if you pull the clutch in or you do anything with the gears and that type of thing. So it works perfectly. Um, a few things you can do, we'll just pull up here, right as we slow down. A few things you can do on the run, uh, you can change the damping setting on the run and that's part of the ESA. So that's just the little button on the left here, you s click down on your scroll, uh, button and you'll see it appears on the bottom. In this case it's normal, I can set it to hard and I just let it go. Whoop. Now, the gearbox in this particular bike feels quite clunky. Uh, it's a very robust style of gearbox and uh, particularly in that first to second, second to third range or gear change set, um, it feels quite clunky and um, it's just something I kind of got used to. It smoothens, it gets much smoother between uh, the gear changes from three to six, that type of thing. Now this particular bike has got uh, uh, the quick shift, gear shift, shift assist pro or quick shift in uh, layman's language and it works brilliantly in the upper gears so if I'm accelerating so I don't need to put a clutch I just simply change the gears and it changed beautifully. I can also back off the throttle and just change downwards by pushing down on the gear, uh, the gear lever on the left hand side of the bike. Now it works pretty good the only issue I had with it was and I'll just show you how it works was the gear shift uh, using the quick shift it worked quite well when we're under full throttle but unlike what I got I've got on the S1000RR if I do a uh, short shift using the quick shift then it's very clunky you what so it kind of jumps if I go from second to third it feels like it jumps a bit more whereas if I go back to second right and I give it throttle right when you're under full throttle the quick shift works brilliantly so that first to second second to third was the area I found I had the most difficulty with the quick shift when I'm short shifting one thing I particularly like about this bike is the uh, windscreen. The windscreen can be adjusted with this knob on the right hand side on the go. So some other bikes I've ridden you have to actually stop and physically move it or you know swing a lever or something but you can't move the screen until you pull up. This one you can do it on the go and it's very cool because it opens up a little bit for a little bit of air down below the screen which doesn't um, which allows you to sit here comfortably without being pulled forward into a avoid there's air in the uh, area in front of your chest but the screen's incredibly effective in getting this the, the wind off your face and off the top of your helmet so suddenly the bike goes very quiet when we put that screen up and then we can screw it back in and we can wind it down on the go whatever works and they've thought of the angle of that screw too I noticed by having it shaped so it fits the left hand as you move it across 
A couple of things I uh, don't necessarily like about the bike. Well, the first was that clunkiness in that first to second, second to third change if I uh, use the quick shift at low revs. Um, unlike the S1000RR, it's j that's as smooth as anything, it's like butter. The second thing that kind of caught me out here a little bit a few times is we've got this digital readout at the bottom of the screen here, but it's got an analogue style speedo and it's in 10 kilometre an hour increments and the needle itself covers about three to four kilometres an hour so it's very uh, chunky in terms of trying to read it it's not very fine and the other thing is I continually am looking at the dash because all of the other bikes I've got have got digital screens so I'm looking for numbers and I sometimes get caught out on the right hand side here when I get off the uh, double R and ride this one because it shows the engine temperature that's how I've got it set up at 80 you know, sometimes around 83, 84, and when I'm in an 80 zone, like I am kind of now, I look at that and uh, I see 83, and is that the speed? Well, no, it's the temperature. So, uh, for me, I have to mentally think about it. Um, the scroll wheel on the left hand side here is associated with the navigator system so all I can simply all I need to simply do is, is I push that left or right and you'll notice the navigator screen is actually changing I've got a heading I've got a couple of different things I can do here around adding waypoints or go home or that type of thing um, I've got the information about the function of the motorcycle and what was interesting about to me is this motorcycle is connected to the GPS in that I can understand all the different ergonomics and bits and pieces around that motorbike uh, and then I keep going and I scroll back to the screen itself so if I want to go home all I simply do is I go to that screen which has got the go home function I scroll the wheel down and then I press and hold and it will set it up so that it now takes me home uh, pretty cool little concept my only other bugbear with this particular bike is probably more to do with the way it was fitted but it's got driving lights and it's got a button here that mounts underneath the left hand mirror and if I press that it turns the lights on and the lights and the high beam switch are operating independently which to me doesn't make a lot of sense uh, it'd be much easier if I could switch it on and then I simply activate the high and low beam now things I like about the bike I love the uh, ergonomics of it I love that screen in the way that I can move it on the run, uh, I can scroll it up and it really is effective in deflecting the wind uh, without creating that vacuum in my chest and pulling me forward. The other thing that is worth mentioning is the handling of the bike. The brakes on this bike are phenomenal and accompany these with the telelever system at the front end. What you find is you've got a bike that brakes extremely hard and doesn't dip under the braking pressure. So I'll give you an example. If I'm riding along here and slam the brakes on, the front end hardly even dips. It doesn't move very much because of the telelever front end. It's a, a brilliant concept and I love it when it comes to handling on the range. Now does the bike handle? Well yes it does. I'm surprised how well it actually does handle. It has a tremendous clearance even though it has a boxer motor. The ability to lean this bike over quite surprised me and um, after I got used to seeing that engine, uh, the engine cylinder head sticking out to the sides and then just kind of ignored them, uh, all of a sudden I realised that the bike really has some tremendous clearance. Now we combine that with the dynamic, uh, uh, the dy dynamic mode where the bike is constantly setting up the damping in reaction to the different conditions, you got a bike that handles brilliantly and it will surprise many people up a range and uh, for the people who tell me that the engine's a little bit doughy well look that may be the case but the engine is suitable for what the bike is designed for and uh, you combine it with this brilliant handling and a 238 kilogram full wet weight it's pretty good upper range and I tell you what uh, in the hands of an experienced rider will take some catching by a lot of people not everyone but a lot, a lot of people 
Another feature I like about this bike is the fact that we can switch between different rider modes on the fly. So on the right hand side there's a little button uh, called the mode button. So all I can see, all I simply do is I press that and the dashboard will scroll through the different settings. So this one is fitted with uh, the chip and the Enduro Pro uh, riding modes. So I can flick between rain, road, dynamic setting where it's got that um, 10 millisecond response or analysis of the damping. The Enduro mode is where we start to switch off certain functions and give it the ability to ride off-road. And the Enduro Pro where I believe everything is, is basically turned off and uh, it just falls back to the rider experience. So all I simply do is I just scroll through until I find that setting and then I just pull the clutch in and it flicks across to whatever new setting I've got. So in conclusion, uh, I have to say I absolutely love this motorbike. It's the most comfortable bike I've ever ridden off-road, that's for sure, and uh, it's incredibly comfortable on the road. Um, my lady, as a pillion, finds this more comfortable than any other bike that she's been on as well. The uh, functions and features of the bike are brilliant. They all work well, typical German manufacturing quality. The handling of the bike is, is a surprise package. It's a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing, and uh, whilst it might have not have the grunt or horsepower of other bikes, uh, where it makes up for that is in the ability of the bike to handle corners and respond to uh, rider inputs in a you know windy range type situation. So all in all, I'm uh, absolutely pleased with this bike. I think it's a brilliant bit of kit and no wonder it's been a bestseller for BMW.